Hello. I just wanted to show my face. Um, we're going to be doing one example on uh, integrating uh, with respect to time, uh, dealing with some applications. So um, you guys did a really, really good job on your last uh, assignment. So we're gonna, just going to keep going forward on that. We're going to be talking about uh, situations where your acceleration may not be due to gravity. So for example, if we're in space or if we're dealing with something on like a physical particle level. So if we're talking, we're going to be talking about particles for this uh, next couple of days. So hello, I'm here. Please come to my virtual check-in. It's 10 o'clock uh, to 1030 every day. I've been seeing a bunch of you guys in there. It's been great. Um, so yeah, uh, please feel free to contact me with any questions, comments, concerns, issues, and let's go. Okay. So I'm just going to continue this. A lot of this is going to look just like the last screencast, so that way we could just talk about the um, notation. So that's the integral sign. Uh, we use that with antiderivatives in order to find original functions. So remember that you have to be plugging in a derivative into this integral. So um, right now we're talking about indefinite integrals because we're not defining them. We'll talk about what defining them means later. Um, and that represents a family of functions. You have to remember when you integrate, you have a plus C there because the C tells us that there could be a random constant attached to the end of your integral, the end of your antiderivative, because what happens when we take a derivative of a constant? It becomes zero. So um, I hope that you able, were able to answer that question before I answered it, but we always have to remember that we have that constant of integration on the end of our uh antiderivative, okay? And then another big thing is that our differential and our variable have to match. So if I have a f of x, it has to be differentiated with respect to x. If this is a f of t, then this has to be a dt. And that will indicate what your variable will be in the, uh, in the actual antiderivative, okay? So remember that that f of x in the integral function is a derivative. That's the biggest thing to remember. You cannot use an integral command if you don't have a derivative plugged into it. Um, okay, we have to think about this as like an inverse operation, the same way like subtraction is the opposite of addition, multiplication is the opposite of division, the integral is the opposite of a derivative. So this is the reason why we're using that. Um, please don't get confused that you're not using a prime notation anymore once that derivative is being plugged into the integral, just because we don't want to confuse ourselves. It's redundant. We don't need to um, write that in there. Okay. So, uh, end of the story is that when we're integrating, we're using this big S symbol, um, we're eliminating a prime from the derivative. So if I'm in the first derivative and I take that integral, I go back to the original function. If I'm in the second derivative and I take that integral, I go back to the first derivative. If I'm in the third derivative and I take that integral, I go back to the second derivative. So that always works. If I take the integral of the hundredth derivative, I'm going to get the 99th derivative. And so that's really, really helpful for us when we're thinking about applications of this integral sign. So all of those applications that we did, so for example, uh, marginal cost. If I don't know my cost equation and I know the marginal cost, I can take the integral and find the actual cost equation. Um, so this is big, big, big into economics. It's big into um, anything having to do with engineering. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're, and we're reverse engineering the things that we want. Um, okay. So uh, this is what we were talking about before. This is a free falling bodies equation. Um, so this describes positions with initial velocities and initial positions here. So um, if you didn't have this function, what you can do is if you have a derivative, you take the integral of it, and then you can find that function. Um, and so this is just big here, um, just to uh, put it out there. The integral of the velocity is its position, and then the integral of the acceleration is its velocity, and that's going to become really helpful for you in your assignment today. Um, and we're going to be doing a different example problem. So here's the new stuff. Um, a particle is moving along a line with the velocity of uh, V of T is 6T plus 10. Um, what is the particle's position equation, um, which is S of T? That's what I want you to call it. S of T is equal to uh, the integral of V of T dT, where S of T is equal to 8. So I tell you that that's uh, the relationship. You just need to take the 
integral. So let's talk about that. So this is what we know. I know that S of 2 is 8. So I know that in uh, the initial original function at position 2, at time 2, I'm going to be 8 units, whatever that means. So I could be 8 units to the east, west, north, south. I'm 8 units, okay? Now, I also know that the velocity is equal to the derivative of the position. That's what this means. And I know that that's also equal to 6t plus 10. So I know that my velocity is equal to 6t plus 10, okay? I also know this relationship. I know that s of t is equal to the integral of v of t dt, okay? So I know that I have to take the integral to find this s of t. And I can't use this first piece of information unless I have this s of t, okay? So, ooh, that's the final answer. I forgot to animate it. So at least we know where we're going. Whoops, okay? So let's talk about this. I'm gonna show you our, um, this is the way I laid it out uh, for the PowerPoint. It would look a little different for me if I was writing it out, but this is just as good. Um, I know the integral of the derivative of S of T is equal to the original function. Okay, so you just remember that S, of, S prime of t is actually v of t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this v of t, this velocity, into my integral. And then I'm going to integrate, and I'm going to find this position function. Remember to have your plus c at the end here, um, because we need to make sure that we understand that this could be at any point in time until we apply our initial condition. Okay, so using that initial condition, we find r c. So I have two uh, s of 2. I'm plugging that into my equation, 3 times 2 squared, just doing a plain substitution, 10 times 2, solve step by step, da, 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 and I get c is equal to negative 24. Big thing is you have to remember to substitute c back into your solution. Have to, have to, have to. If you don't, then it's wrong. Then it's wrong. Um, that's something that I saw a lot of you guys leaving off the first assignment. It got a little better last assignment, so I want you guys to keep going. Remember to plug your c back into the equation. And now this is your final solution. Yeah, so this was a little different. I didn't use a uh, gravity simulation here. This is just using a, a velocity equation that I gave you. That's the way your uh, work is gonna be looking. You are gonna be having one problem where you do have to start from an acceleration, which you do have an example of in the past. You just are changing the numbers. Uh, Please feel free to contact me with any questions, comments, concerns. I hope to talk to you guys soon. Uh, yeah, have a great day. Stay safe. All right, get out of here.